Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter here, consultant audiologist and director of Cluax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. And here we have a patient who attended with bilateral fully occluding earwax and dead skin. You can see it's quite dry and flaky near the entrance. There is a bit of humidity in the ear, and you may have noticed that with the lens of the endoscope fogging up. But as soon as you introduce the suction tip, that resolves instantly. Um, if I wasn't using um, suction, if I just left the endoscope in the ear for about 30 seconds, it would automatically demist itself. So the surface was quite dry and hard, so I decided to try and use the ear pick to, to leverage this out. So I've just gone over the top of the plug there's a bit of an opening but the core which is quite often the case when you get these keratin plugs the the exterior is quite dry and hard but the core is really soft it just cut through it um, so I'm just reverting to the right career and the endoscope at this stage is just outside of the the ear it's actually located outside of the first bend they have got quite a narrow uh, bendy entrance and this is where possibly the wax scope would be a bit more beneficial because you could dilate the ear canal wider and uh, also straighten the ear canal as well so once again I'm just going to the top and just trying to slowly pull this away and you can see there's loads of skin adhesions you can see that's quite reflective there that this fresher layer of skin that's more wide turn appearance that's uh, that skin is enveloping this plug and it's still semi-attached to the ear canal wall which can make the plug difficult to remove. So we're going to have to uh, do this in stages but already at this stage we can see the top part of the patient's eardrum so they have some instant relief in their um, symptoms which is primarily was reduced hearing. Now if you keep watching guys you'll see um, what may just appear a straightforward procedure actually turned out to be a procedure that I had to refer onwards to ENT because there is an ulceration on the front part of the ear canal, the anterior canal wall, with some embedded keratin. So whenever you see a case like that, you've got to rule out potential underlying uh, ear canal cholesterol, which are very, very rare. And a cholesterol is essentially a, a dead skin cyst. Um, they normally occur in the middle ear, in, 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 um, in the ear canal. So they, um, if you have a retracted eardrum, so when the eardrum is buckled inwards, it creates a pocket. So skin that's trying to migrate off the eardrum falls into the pocket and it can't escape and it forms into a cyst. And this cyst is self-growing and it can then enter uh, the middle ear. So it can perforate the eardrum and this cyst can then and to continue to grow in the middle ear space. Now, the middle ear cavity is surrounded by um, different structures. Um, for example, um, superiorly, so the top part of the ear canal in the middle ear, you've got the medial cranial fossa. So that's um, the bone that separates the, um, uh, the intracranial cavity and the middle ear. Posteriorly so to the back part of the ear canal, you've got the mastoid bone. Quite often with a cholesterol not only can it grow upwards towards the brain, but it can also grow posteriorly into the, the mastoid bone. So the, the middle ear is connected to the mastoid bone. There's an uh, antrum there, so a little entrance. Um, you have the facial nerve um, uh, running through the middle ear. So if the cholesterol gets extremely large, it can... Um, it can cause disease and erosion of the facial nerve, so it can leave someone with um, a facial palsy. Um, it can also sometimes grow anteriorly to the front part of the ear canal, uh, where you've got your temporomandibular jaw joint, um, and also the parotid gland, so one of your uh, salivary glands is also located more, um, not only anteriorly, but inferiorly. So in the case here, it would be more um, southeast. So cholesterol left untreated can potentially be fatal. Um, a bit rarer is when you have a, the dead skin cyst collecting in the ear canal itself. And in this case, there is a potential for that. And so the skin, um, it, there's no retraction of this patient's eardrum, but for some reason, as the skin is migrating outwards towards the entrance, it's um, obstructed in some way or the skin migration is slowed down. So the skin itself 
cell forms into a cyst. Sometimes if patients have um, irregular bumps in the ear canal, that can prevent some of the skin migrating out of the ear because it has to go over the bump and it can't. And then you get a collection of dead skin. And in this case, on the front part of the ear canal, you will, it's quite evident actually, there is an ulceration of the skin so that the, the epithelial layer of skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal, that's missing and you've got some embedded keratin. So some of this dead skin is now entering that ulceration and there is a bit of inflammation in that area. You'll see the ear canal is it's protruding outwards from the front part of the ear canal. So we have referred the patient to ENT. And um, as I said, sometimes what something that may appear innocuous um, um, when we hear back from ENT, they've performed a CT scan and have confirmed that there is a canal cholesterol and the patient has to end up having surgery. Um, so we've got the more lateral dead skin and wax out. This is uh, more medial now. So I'm just trying to separate in it, loosen it off the canal walls. So actually, at this stage of the procedure, the patient's hearing probably would have uh, deteriorated a little bit because I've occluded the ears. By bringing the skin inwards, it's created less of an opening. We can't see the eardrum as well. I thought I'd try the forceps there, but again, it's just a bit too soft. So I'm going back with the Rikeret, and because it's um, streamlined, it's, it's got a tapered tip, I'm able to glide through much narrower parts and openings of the ear, whereas with the previous uh, Corette or Jobson Horn I used, it was a lot thicker, it was a lot more difficult to do that, and, and in attempting to do that, you may actually push the wax plug, or in this case the character plug, further and deeper into the ear. So again, just going to the floor of the ear canal. I'm just giving this a little wriggle. And it's attached to the right hand side of the ear canal. You can probably see that as I'm bringing it away, it's, there's a bit of skin there that's holding it to the front part of the ear canal. And that's where the ulceration is. So you can see here to the right, the ear canal is protruding now. That may in part be the patient's natural ear anatomy because when we uh, perform the procedure on the left side, the, the anterior canal wall is slightly protruding bulge, but it's quite evident you've got a collection of dead skin here and that's all the white mass here. So I'm gonna try and clear away as much as I can to reveal what's going on underneath. And there's a bit of, you can see there's a bit of moisture there as well, a bit of dampness. Um, when you've got dead skin like this, it can cause a bit of um, moisture uh, collection because of the humidity. But also, in the case of a, uh, a cholesterol it does release proteolytic enzymes. And um, these enzymes are digestive enzymes. They can start chewing away at the flesh. So in part, it's also to do with that. Um, the skin is releasing these enzymes. It's ulcerating the skin. As a result, you get a bit of dampness and moisture collecting in the ear. So I'm just mopping up a bit of the entrance there. So now that I've spotted that part of the ear canal where there may be a canal cleshotoma, I just want to peel away all this remaining skin because we don't know if there's a secondary one potentially there lurking underneath this the blanket of dead skin. It's obviously very tricky because you're so close to the canal wall, we don't want to graze it because that would be painful for the patient. So I'm just using the fine end suction probe. The fine end gives you a bit more precision. Um, if you do come in contact with the ear canal, which we're trying to avoid, it's going to be less traumatic than using the full zona suction probe. And I think there's two alterations here. There's one in front of it as well, where I'm going, uh, where I'm directing the suction probe to now. So there's a small ulceration there as well. Now I didn't get all the keratin out. There was some hardened keratin that was embedded and it was becoming a bit uncomfortable for the patient. So I did leave a little bit. So it could be underneath this uh, bulging of the ear canal, you've got a dead skin cyst, um, which is invisible to us at the moment, but it's growing underneath this and hence why it's bulging outwards 
so this definitely needs further investigation. There's no otorrhea, so no real discharge apart from some, some dampness and moisture, moisture underneath that skin layer that I peeled away. So hopefully it's nothing to be too concerned by. But if there is here a, a canal cleshitoma, this is adjacent to the TMJ, so the temporomandibular joint. So we've got to be careful that it's not invading and being destructive, uh, destructive to adjacent structures that surround the ear canal. You see, I'm just slowly gliding across the canal wall, sort of um, poking into it. And as I'm doing it, I can feel there's a bit of inflammation. You can feel a bit of sponginess there. Which kind of as a buffer, actually. So um, otherwise, the skin that lines the bony part of the ear canal where we are now, it's less than 0.1 millimetres in thickness. So if you penetrate too hard, you're going to hit the bone directly, which would be really uncomfortable for the patient. So when there's a bit of swelling inadvertently, it does act as a bit of a buffer. So this is that remaining bit of keratin that I was trying to peel away, but it was very difficult to, to get that out. So I'm just now going to peel away some dead skin at the base of the ear canal. the patient does report very itchy ears you may have noticed um, as we enter the ear there's a bit of a scab there so the patient does have a tendency of scratching their ear so I've discussed strict water precautions so allowing water in your ear can actually dry out the skin so our ears naturally produce oils and sweat so sebum is a oily lipid um, secretion secreted by the sebaceous glands that are connected to the hair follicles that are found in the outer third of the ear canal and also located in the outer third of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion, you have modified sweat glands. They're called um, apocrine glands. And in the ear, their actual name is ceremonious glands. And they produce an oily sweat full of uh, lipids and enzymes, uh, as opposed to the watery sweat that we found in our brow in response to hot temperatures. Um, so the sweat produced in the ear, it's not stimulated by heat. So it's not a mechanism to cool the body down. Uh, instead, um, the sweat produced in the ear is emotional sweat, so it's triggered by the flight and fight response. Um, and the glands that are, the ceremonious glands, they, they are present at birth, but they only become active during puberty. Um, and in combination, this oily sweat and the oily lipid secretion sebum, they help to moisturise the skin. It's your skin's natural moisturiser. So it sits on the surface of the skin and it helps to repel external water that enters the ear, but it also allows the underlying skin to maintain its natural moisture because obviously oil is hydrophobic. Um, so when you get water in your ear, um, so for example, if you get warm water in your ear, that can break down um, this oil, oily, um, uh, oily sweat and sebum, um, and it can get washed away. But even if you have cold water, if it's in the ear, if it's logged in the ear for a long time, it can also still break down this oily lubrication layer. And in the absence of this sebum and emotional sweat, the, um, the surface skin then gets macerated, so it breaks down. So skin cells are naturally hydrophilic. They absorb more water. So the skin that lines the ear canal, when you haven't got that protective oily layer, it starts absorbing the external water, causing the skin cells themselves to swell, uh, overhydrate, and they can burst at the membranes and that it macerates the skin, it breaks it down. And then the water can penetrate further and deeper into the deeper layers of the skin, or if it's the bony part of the ear canal, it can infiltrate the bone, bone part of the ear canal and cause it to get infected. So we're just moving on now to the patient's left ear. Again, very dry skin here, narrow ear canal entrance. So I'm just trying to separate it off the canal wall again. Another benefit this oily uh, protective layer provides to the ear canal that it, it's slightly acidic and the acidity helps to inhibit harmful bacterial growth. So our ears are full of um, 
uh, what we call skin flora, so natural pathogens, um, natural uh, bacteria uh, and fungi, but under normal conditions, they're not pathogenic. Um, so the normal conditions of the ear should be that they're dry, clear of water, um, uh, normal body temperature, and um, they should be, it should be acidic. Now, when you wash away these oils that, and sweats that are produced in the ear, uh, you're washing away the acidity. So the ear itself, the pH level becomes more alkaline or neutral, which then gives rise to pathogenic bacteria. Um, from uh, colonizing and breeding in the ear, that, that can lead to an infection. In fact, we call it swimmer's ear. So, um, an infection caused by water uh, entering the ear is called swimmer's ear. So, I'm just trying to use the forceps here, but I just found it difficult spreading the jaws wide enough to get encapsulate the whole plug. And again, it was a bit soft at the core. So, I've just installed some medical grade olive oil and Simultaneously now, just trying to use the right pick, just slowly trying to leverage this out. So I've brought it forward probably half a centimetre. And I've created an opening, so even at this stage, the patient could hear significantly better because the sound is now able to travel through towards the eardrum, um, through that opening that we've created. I think I'm going to revert to the correct in a moment, we shall see. Glide the correct in if memory serves me correct. Yes. Oh, now I'm still using the right pick, so I'm just trying to get over and beyond. But the core is just too soft, so as the pick is coming away, instead of dragging and extracting this plug, it's just cutting through it. So with the right correct, it gives you a bit more surface area. It's just like a, a an ice cream scoop, really. Um, so you, you get more more purchase. And it's slowly coming away now. I'm just breaking it into pieces. So this plug is still quite deep. It's past the second bend. So it's more than a centimetre into the ear canal. The average ear canal length is about two and a half centimetres. So I'm just trying to go to the top of the ear canal and also to the back. I'm slowly leveraging this out. Now, if the ear canal was a straight tube without these bends, it would be far more easier to use these instruments, but we're, we're using these, uh, and I'm using the angled ones, I, I believe here, uh, which really does help compared to the straighter instruments when you're using an endoscope, because otherwise you're trying to insert a straight instrument into a bendy ear canal, and obviously it's going to be quite tricky so the angle that so we've got a bend about 30 degrees and it's located three and a half centimeters from the tip of the correct and it it's a bit like the zona suction probe that also has a bend and it just allows better access into the ear so just going to mop up near the entrance so again this patient's the front part of the ear canal it is slightly protruding most i've been saying that most of our ear canals are the anterior canal wall does have a tendency of bulging outwards but there's no ulceration here. They have got a slight widening of the base of the ear canal as well, the floor. And because their entrance is so narrow, the skin plug is, is collecting in that widening, this crater. Um, and because the entrance is narrow, it's finding it more difficult to, 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 to escape because it's larger than the entrance. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.